All right, guys, here I'm going to show you how to import animation into UDK. Um, we're going to do the weird, uncomfortable, weird looking pencil wormy thing. It's just simple, something really quick I threw together. I was going to do something a little more complicated today, but I'm running out of time, voice, and energy. So, what we're going to do, something pretty darn simple. So, we got this guy here. Now, some of you guys that are old school UDK are used to doing the animation, bringing it in. Dragging it into the scene automatically works because you have your animation tree set up. That's kind of not the case anymore. What you have to do now is make a uh, matinee and connect it to the matinee, which isn't necessarily bad because then you can actually make some secondary animation. We're gonna we're not gonna get into the secondary animation, but we're gonna run through this and how to get this set up. So what we do first, I'm gonna select the bones here, and I am going to. Check my animation first, make sure it's all working together. Notice I have controllers for every part of the animation. And I'm going to go in here and go to, uh, let me see here. Sorry, my wife's trying to distract me. So I do uh, select hierarchy, shift select the geo. And we are going to bake our animation here. So let's go into to our keys. Bake simulation. You can pull up and check it here. Um, should be able to do the entire range of what you have. Mine goes already all, all the way up to 120. So we're just going to go bake. You can see mine's already baked. But uh, the key thing you do have to really be careful about. It. You have to make sure you select the hierarchy. You've got to do that. Otherwise, it's not going to do this correctly and just in case I'll do that one more time grab this and hit bake so we got it all baked and you should check each bone just to triple check to make sure you did select it unless your wife's trying to distract you and then you can forget stuff <laughs> and so I got this stuff right here all baked in working just great so now I actually believe it or not I can go in here and get rid of my controllers because you really don't want them in the scene um, UDK does not like these controllers in the scene, so you have to actually isolate your bones and your geo. So I can hit delete at this point. And if you baked it correctly, you should still see your animation. See, we still got it going on. Yay! From here, a good thing to get into, and you got to make sure you save it as an individual file because you don't want to keep this particular information. A good thing to do is you want to go and optimize your scene size. Op optimize that, make sure everything's on, and hit optimize. It's undoable. So once you do it, it's set into motion. When you're done, go in here now and you want to export all. I'm going to export as FBX. I'll call this a vid demo. Worm. And we're going to hit save. Make sure smoothing groups is on. Make sure animation is selected. Now, the only time you would turn that off, and I get this confused sometimes because animation trees. Um, I taught an advanced rigging class, and we went over animation trees. And uh, you would make a default one, and then you would bring in all your different animations to make the tree. But since we're just raw bringing in animation, we can leave this on. We don't need to have a default because we know what we want. We maybe want a, uh, you know, a giant monster coming out of the ground, or we want... Um, butterflies to fly around the room but we don't want to be able we don't want to have to link them all together maybe we just have it on a big huge timeline and we just want it to loop so this is perfect for what you need to do otherwise if it's animation tree you would turn this off and you've seen the video on eat 3d where they actually had a default one and when they did the default one they did not export their animation and in UDK they also turned it off so you can also do it here as well as UDK but keep that in mind if you just want raw animation into the scene you want to turn this on all right everything is good to go don't need to bake it twice sometimes weird things come in on top of it and we go ahead and hit export you don't need constraints we moved our curves you already baked in our bones we're all good to go and we go export Right, so now that that's in there, we're going to go ahead and close out of Maya. We're not going to save. And we'll go to UDK. Um, next run. It always asks, do you want to update? 
they're like no you are a whore all right so now that we got that all set up here we're going to do some importing now we're just going to import this lecture that i just did so let's go and find him real quick i think he's in desktop There we go, animation import UDK, yay, there he is. Vid demo, there he is, he went in the right spot. I second guess myself. There we go, and hit open. Now when he comes in, you do wanna put in import animations. Again, you would turn that off if you got a default. My package, video one, that's fine. Okay, all, get him in there. And you'll see automatically he comes with an animation set, and that's what you want. So when you click on this, you hit play, you wanna see that, yay, you see that's good. Awesome. This is a lot easier than it seems. Now, before an old version of UDK, you could drag him into the scene and you would be ready to go. Unfortunately, that's not the case anymore because he won't play if we automatically go in here and start walking around the room. So what we need to do with him selected, I'm going to open up Kismet. We have to have Kismet set up. So we go right click and we do um, new, let me see here, new event, level loaded. So it starts in the beginning of the level. A lot of times I'll do that because if you have butterflies or whatever it is that you have going around, it can start level loaded. You can also do trigger. So if you want to create a trigger, you can create a trigger, and that trigger will allow the animation to be played. You can link it directly. So that's the nice thing about putting it into UDK. So let's go in here and right click here. We're going to do new matinee. We want it to play on when the level loads. In matinee, I want it to loop. These are things you got to remember to put in here. I already have a looping animation for my uncomfortable worm creature. Go and double click on matinee. And we're going to right click on this guy and we're going to say new skeletal mesh group. Give it a name. Call this vid demo. Underscore demo. I always want to put in underscores or words right next to each other in UDK. Get into that habit. See the animations automatically recognize, which is great. That's what you want. But let's go in here. We're going to go up to vid demo. And we're going to go to animation group. You got to remind UDK what it's exactly looking at. We're going to grab our animation set, and we're going to click on this arrow to load it. So we have to load it into the scene, which is good, because now we need to go to animation. And we're also going to remind UDK again. Let me move my timeline up about five seconds. That's fine. And with animation selected, I'm going to hit enter. And it's going to ask you what the animation set is going to be for this particular animation slot, which is good because then you can actually make several of them. Sometimes UDK gets a little confused with that, but just be aware of that. Make sure you save as you go. And if you do run into problems, make another animation set. You can link it. You can even hide the animation behind Geo where it switches. Or you can make an animation tree. I haven't made a video on that, but that's a good one on 3D Total if you want to check it out. So video dim worm, worm, so OK. And I can go all the way to the end where I want it to stop. Notice it knows that I'm at five seconds for the animation to stop, which is nice. And if I want to, I can just hit enter again if I wanted a new animation linked up to that. So if it's already blending, this is a generic way you can try it, but I'm going to keep it the way it is because we want it from the beginning and just to play through. And again, you can make more as you go. So just to recap, first I imported my animation. I created a Kismet event, double clicked on that. And when I did that, I right clicked here and I said, make a new skeletal mesh. Remember, I drug him into the scene. Make sure you put him in the scene first before you uh, do your Kismet, before you do your uh, Kismet here. So we got, I drug him into the scene, did matinee with matinee active. I right clicked and I said skeletal mesh group, created the skeletal mesh group, um, clicked on the video demo and loaded my animation set with it selecting the content browser. So you have to click on the plus here, then the arrow. And then here you have to remind UDK exactly what animation set you're using. So you would hit enter right in this area. Right at the first key, hit enter. And then you can also hit enter again if you wanted to change things up, but you gotta be careful with that because you can override some stuff. So let's go and close that out. All set, rebuild all. Cool, close it out. Save, make sure you save. 
So we're going to save my package, save, whatever. Videm animation. Anima. And let's call this more vid. Save. And then now we can play from here. And if we look around, ah, I might have fell off the world. Let's try that again. Play from here. There we go. You'll see the worm moving uncomfortably, disturbing, and staring right at you. And you'll notice he's looping because in matinee, I clicked on looping. All right. He's got a little weird normal thing going on there. He doesn't really have any coordinates. I don't think. I think I did it without any UV coordinates on there. Simple straight line. All right. So to get that looping going, you click on the matinee and you hit looping. All right. That's about it. That simple to get him in. Um, you feel free to leave messages if you have any questions from there. Buh, buh, bye bye bye.